Hi, Jeff Conza here. Just a quick video on how to create GPX files using Google Maps and Garmin's Basecamp software. Hope this will help you out there. So let's get started. So here's a blank, just uh, maps.google.com and Basecamp, which is the software that you get uh, from Garmin with their GPS units. I'm not going to go into how to identify the route in the first place except for just a couple of seconds here. For that, I mainly look at Google Maps and try to find the squiggly lines though. Since that's where we start at, let's just, uh, let me just show you a couple of things about Google Maps. Uh, hopefully you know this, but if not, this may help you. So let's find uh, the Lowe's Home Improvement on University Parkway, a popular starting point for us. Uh, point A here. And let's get directions to. Oops, Hanging Rock State Park. Look at that. Get directions. So that gives us a basic route. Uh, one of the things that I like though about using uh, Google Maps is it's very easy to change the route just by clicking on the blue line. You get this little dot, pull it over to the road you want, uh, and it'll create a new route for you. Then you can add additional destinations. Uh, we can swap these. Uh, lots of different things. And I just keep working on that until I get the route that I want. Now for this video I'm actually not going to use one of my own routes. Uh, let me get back over here into Google Maps. Uh, I'm going to use the map for the upcoming chicken stew ramble um, that the Tar Hill Mini Motoring Club will be doing at the end of January. The map was actually created by one of our members, Wings, the rally master for the event. Uh, so you can see the map here of the route. starts at A. B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I are our points. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, hopefully along the way I might mess something up so I can show you a little bit how to correct those errors because that's something you'll definitely want to know. Now, to get things going, uh, we're going to zoom in here. And when I'm first starting out on a route, uh, one of the things I like to do is turn on the satellite imagery. Uh, the main thing I'm looking for is to make sure that there is plenty of parking that is available uh, and that uh, if I think you know a church or a fire station or a park or whatever is where it is that it really is there. Um, sometimes Google Maps the information on the map part doesn't exactly match up with reality so it's a good little check. So once I know that it, that's correct, let's go back to the map. Let's see, we're going to start at uh, Clementine Drive here, Hampton Road, Idles Road. Okay, so that gives me an idea. So let's go over to Base Camp. Uh, they have Base Camp now. Uh, works pretty much like. Google Maps does the map part over here. You can click and drag with your mouse to move things around. Let's say I think it'll be over here somewhere. You can double click to start zooming in. You can right click, oops, double right click to zoom out. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is uh, looking at our screen here. We see uh, up here my collection. We want to click on that. Right click. 
start a new list. Let's give it a name. Chicken stew. Oops, ramble. Okay, hit enter. So we have a new list. Down here in the bottom part, uh, we say it's blank because we have not added any points to it yet. Uh, so that's where we're going to start at. First thing we want to do is find that starting point in the map. I didn't really need to uh, go back and look at my map again and get my bearings here. Let's see. Uh, okay, right near the park. Okay, right down in here. So what are we looking for? Oh, here we go. Hampton Road, Idols Road, Clementine Drive. And if I remember right, we were right at the just past Clementine Drive. So we'll pick a point. So one of the first things is we want to zoom in close enough so we can make sure our, our pointer is the right side of the road. And as we hover over it, we see it'll pop up a little address. When we get to that, we can right click and see Create Waypoint. Click on that. So it has created the waypoint over in the list and a window has popped up asking for some information. So one, uh, one of the things people who have seen my maps may know is there's all these alphanumeric codes at the beginning of each of the points. I do that to help keep the points organized and then later on when I'm ready to get them off of my GPS it makes it easier to do that as well. So for this one uh, I like to use usually a combination of two letters and then three numbers. Um, the three numbers is usually I don't ever foresee going into the thousands, so if I have a three digit number I should have enough range to create all the points I need to create. Uh, one of the things though is for anything below 100 I want to be sure to have the leading zero. For the two uh, characters, I just use something that will help me identify that it's related to a certain route. So in this case I'll use CS for chicken stew, but you can really use anything you want to. You don't have to limit yourself to, to two. Uh, and since this is the star, I'm going to say 001 because I know I won't have anything lower than that. And I'll actually rename this start. The other thing you can do is, and I like to do this, is choose a different symbol. And, you know, just whatever happens to strike my fancy. I don't know if there's a chicken in the system here. Uh, that one looks like some tracks. We'll use that for this one. So you do that, you can see over here in the list that as I'm updating the information in this dialog box, it's updating it in real time in the list. So there's no need to hit uh, save or anything like that. Once I get it done, I can either just close it or move it out of the way. I think I'll do that. This. So I'll keep this down here kind of out of the way where I can get to it uh, as we go along. Um, I think actually I'll pull that over so as the list builds up I can say it. Now I mentioned uh, 
being able to delete them later on. So after the run is over, the middle of the summer, I want to clean out the My Favorites list on my GPS. Uh, if I had entered something like Start or Triumph Actuation or whatever, I might be going, Wow, why did I have that in there? What does this Start mean? Or what is this Triumph in here for? And I might not remember that was part of the Chicken Stew Ramble. So, uh, if I go through though and I see a bunch of CS, da da da, CS da da da, CS da da da, I'll know that those are all part of some route. It's obviously not one I'm getting ready to do, so I'll just delete any favorite that has that code on it, and then I know that I don't need it anymore. Okay, so we've got our first point, and so now we're just going to keep repeating that same process over and over. We're going to go back and look at our route in Google Maps. Let's see, we want to go down this Hampton Road and hit 150. So that's probably where our next point is going to be. Uh, the main thing I look for is going to be a major turn, something where I know that the, if the GPS has a choice. I'm going to want it to go a certain way. It's a little bit of an art to that. Uh, you'll pick it up as you use the software a while. So I'm looking for my second point. Uh, let me back out here a little bit. Uh, 150, so somewhere down here is where Hampton Road is going to come back in. There it is. So one of the things when you're doing this, the next point in the route is I like to pick a point that is just past where that next turn is going to be. So from our route, we're going to come down Hampton Road, make a left on the 150. So I want to pick the next point to be somewhere just after we make that turn. So I right click, create waypoint, same as before. Uh, and let's edit the point. So this is where my number comes in, CS for chicken stew. Uh, now, I like to increment by 10. If it's a really long run, I might do 20 or 30 even. So for this one, I think I'm safe with a 10 because there was really only one way to get down to this point, and that's Hampton Road. So I say 010. Highway 150 is fine. That's nice and clean. I'm gonna choose my deer tracks. Okay, so two points. So why pick that point after the turn? Well, once we get it into the GPS, if you're in your car watching your GPS as you come down this road, if the point is before the turn, then the GPS is going to be telling you, you know, one mile until CS010, Highway 150, half mile to CS010, 150, on and on as it counts down until you get to that point. The problem is, it's not telling you what you're going to do once you get there. And once you get there, if you're real close, by the time the GPS kind of zooms back out and decides where the next uh, point is going to be and how to get to it, you may be at the turn waiting for the GPS to figure out what to do. Now, in an intersection like this, it may not be a big deal because you're probably going to be at a stop sign or a stoplight. You'll be sitting there waiting, but if you're driving along and you have a turn coming up, you don't want to miss the turn. So by putting the point afterward, as we come along, it'll be telling us turn left on the 150 in one mile, and a half mile, in 500 feet. We get there, turn left. That's going to tell us CS110 is in... 1,000 feet or whatever, we get to that and then it will go on and start figuring out where the next uh, turn is. So it just makes it easier while you're driving along to keep track of uh, what's going on. Okay, so to continue the process, we're just going to keep doing that. Uh, zoom in, zoom out, pan around. Switch over to Google Maps to find your where your next point on the route is going to be. 
so we keep doing that until we built the round. So I'm going to uh, cut off the recording here for a second to uh, build some points and then we'll pick back up once I have the points all together. Finish building our points for this map that we're creating for the chicken stew ramble. You can see over in the list uh, I have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, what, nine points. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have nine points uh, ending at Flow Mini, of course. Um, so our next step is to generate the route. And this, again, is where this whole naming convention deal uh, can be useful. When you go and start clicking on points, let me just do some. You can click them uh, individually to add them or whatever. But if we if we have them in order like we do, this is the order we want them in. We can click on the first one, shift click on the last one. So it's selected all of the points. We right click and create route from waypoints. You can see it took a few minutes to calculate. Once it's done, you'll see in the list over here we have a route and this dialog box has popped up. So the first thing we want to do is uncheck the auto name and then type in the field here a new name for it. So chicken stew ramble. Uh, I, I usually try to keep these fairly short and succinct because this is the text that will appear in the list uh, when somebody has it loaded in their GPS. Uh, once we do that, the other thing I like to do is go over to the Info tab where we can see the total distance, 37 miles. And we also see the total moving time, 1 hour 24 minutes for this particular route. And I usually like to go in and change the color just because I don't like magenta. Uh, and we'll use, I'll pick something else. Uh, I think I like dark blue for this one. Okay, so we can close this if we want to. And if we go and click on Chicken Stew Ramble, in fact, let's double click on it there and then close that. So we see the route uh, is laid out for us. Uh, kind of at a or zoomed out. So, looks to be pretty close. Uh, I do see one error that I had a feeling might uh, crop up. We'll get into that in a minute. But what I like to do uh, when I go to review the route, a little trick, is I actually like to start at the end of the route and work backwards. Um, I usually find I can uh, identify the errors a little more quickly that way uh, and of course by this point I pretty much know what the route is supposed to be so I know we're supposed to be coming in on 150 here so I keep working back yeah this looks like that's right did this little funky thing with these roads right here back to Central Road, there's one of our points, uh, CS070, back up this way, yep, that looks good, for Community Church Road, looks good, Cooper Road, this little hinky tinky thing here on Fry Bridge Road, and keep working back, now if you had to, you could refer back over to Google Maps to compare and make sure you're on the right road. Um, I've been doing this long enough. I recognize it's doing okay. So we'll come down off Arcadia Road. Uh, this does not look right right here where this uh, line is coming in from Dr. Zimmerman Road. And we see that the line is a little bit darker on Welcome Arcadia, meaning it has laid the route over there twice. Uh, and so what we can see is that it did not make the loop that it was supposed to make here. The route is actually supposed to, from here on Craver Road, instead of this turn onto Dr. Zimmerman Road, it's supposed to stay straight. 
Craver, come down, make a ride onto old US 52, and come over and then turn on to Welcome Arcadia Road. So we'll fix that in a second. Uh, I'll just show you we can keep following the route backwards, uh, back to Enterprise Road, 150, we did that little figure eight thing, Hampton Road, and on back to. Squiggly Road here, that's going to be fun. And we're back at the start, so very good. Alright. So, oops, let's uh, go back over here to where our air was. And so let me show you how to fix things and a little bit why this whole naming convention method thing works. So let's zoom back in. So, I had a feeling it would do this just because normally I probably would have gone ahead and put a point over here on old US 52 to force it to come down there. And so that's what we need to fix is we need to identify somewhere in between this little leg here. So this is uh, between point CS020 and CS030, we need another point to force the routing to go this way. So, I'm pretty confident we go on to US 52 here and create a waypoint. So, since I use an increment of 10, it's very easy for me to stick a new number in here because I didn't go 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I can just stick a number in there and it will be in the proper order. So CS025, uh, the midpoint of those two. And let's give it a new symbol here. Okay, so you can see that it put it over here in the list in proper order between 020 and 030. I'm going to close this. I don't really need this properties up. All right, so, but now how do we get it into our route? Well, that's pretty easy. We go and we double click on our route. You can see in the bottom of the window here, it has our list of points. So we would scroll down, find the two points, 020, 030. We're going to want them in between, or want it in between those two. So, just come over here, grab our new point that we need to add. We we'll click and drag it over. You see it makes a little line there wherever it we put it. So we want it in between those two. Let go. Recalculates the route. And now we can see when we zoom in that it has recalculated things and now makes the loop like we wanted it to. And like we were hoping it would do. So that's how we fix a route by adding a point and dropping it in. And I think hopefully you can see now the usefulness of this uh, name and numbering convention, how it makes it easy to keep them in order and insert a new point. If for some reason it had gone in there and tried to make a different turn than I wanted, I would again split the distance, add another point, and of course because I have I can make it something like CS022 or 023 and still be in the proper order. Okay, um, and let me see if I can find one other point here that I can. I'm just going to show you. Well, we'll just try this one here CS040. One thing you can do. Uh, is move a, move a point. It's fairly easy. I'm actually going to just move it down the same road here, but you could use it to actually move a point onto a different road. So on the Mac, I use the Alt button, click and drag, drag it along, and drop it, and it just moves the point. The route gets recalculated. Of course, in this case, I didn't uh, really change anything, but if I moved it to a different road, it would reroute it on the new road. Okay, so 
and that's our route. Let me double click and get it back. So we can see now that looks pretty much just like what was in Google Maps. And so we're done. So the last little bit we want to do is export the route. Uh, I'm going to go up here and click on Chicken Stew Ramble in my list. And I don't want to change the name. Just get it highlighted. For this one, you have to go up here to the menu bar, File, Export Chicken Stew Ramble, and you can see I have a folder here for routes. Uh, now I will give this a different uh, file name. I like to use all lowercase and no spaces. T H N C Chicken Stew Ram Ramble. Dot GPX. I add the GPX so it will be lowercase, otherwise it will come out uppercase and I don't like that. Export. That's the first item and then the other item is to print the route sheets. Uh, you could, uh, I don't think you want to use the print, the file print up here. I prefer to go back down here bring up the dialog and you see it has a print tab and you'll print directions and print the map uh, so if I say print directions for this one uh, I'm actually going to save as PDF and it's also going to end up in the routes folder which is fine THMC chicken stew ramble Directions. Give it a title. Chicken stew ramble. And save. Usually, I like to also print the map. Yeah, save as PDF. HMC chicken stew ramble map. And we'll see chicken stew ramble map. And then I'll use uh, preview. Uh, if you have Windows, you can get something like uh, I believe it's a TK PDF, PDF TK, to merge the uh, PDF files together into one. Okay, so that's it. That's the lesson. Hopefully that will give you a little better idea of what's involved in creating a GPX. I know we have some folks in the club that are interested in being able to produce their own GPX files uh, for routes that they're creating. Uh, of course, uh, share this with other mini clubs, other car clubs. Uh, if it helps somebody, uh, that would be great and well worth it. I appreciate you uh, putting up with the audio and video quality of this video, and thanks for watching.